this is an ultrasound study of a 40 years old male. Uh, the pathology relates to the kidney and urinary bladder. The ultrasound is rather difficult in this case because of uh, not that the pathology is difficult, it's because of the size of the patient. is uh, is so fat and bulky <coughs> that the ultrasound becomes very, very <coughs> cumbersome. So let's start with the ultrasound anyway. Pass up. <coughs> now what we are seeing is uh, is the right kidney and uh, the right kidney is you can see uh, dilated moderate <coughs> to massively with uh, the preservation of the parenchymal parenchymal thickness as it measures at the upper pore, the thickness is 14.4 uh, millimeter, and at the mid region, anterior mid region, the parenchyma measures 15.1. The rest all of this is the hydronephrosis, the dilated calyces. And at the lower pole, what's the situation at the lower pole? This is the lower pole. Calyces, lower pole parenchyma, and 14.8. So the parenchyma is uh, a thickness is preserved, but when compared to the liver parenchyma, the echogenicity of the kidney uh, parenchyma is raised more. Normally, it should be less than uh, the echogenicity of the liver but here the echogenicity is slightly more as compared to that of the liver parenchymal echogenicity. Uh, Cortical medullary differentiation is rather muffled as we proceed with the ultrasound you will note that the I'm giving you this angle uh, intentionally to show you that uh, throughout we I am unable to see that there is any pyramid in the region. The parenchyma is seen, okay, fine, but the pyramids are not seen. The cortical medullary differentiation is intact. <coughs> Sorry, he is muffled rather. His muffled is not intact. Now you see that this is the pelvis of the kidney, and the pelvis of the kidney is significantly dilated, and uh, it's dilated. Uh, this is all pelvis of the kidney, protrudes outside the kidney and measures 6 centimeters. It's uh, no, uh, free of any echoes and we do not see any calculus uh, within the kidney. No calculus is seen. Now this uh, I can measure the pelvis appears to be uh, see you see it is it is now extending posterior medially this area up to this area and I can trace it to the difficulty with this patient to like that's not now this is the uh, Bowel gases are disturbing though. We have to wait for some time to get rid of the bowel gases. And if not, then well, at least it's uh, dilated and elongated pelvis. Here, you see it. So, we can trace it. Okay, let's say if I start from this region, I can trace it uh, up to this level. So it's measuring about nine centimeters. The nine centimeter length and six centimeters was the anterior posterior diameter of this uh, dilated pelvis, which is free of any debris or calculus. Okay. Now let's move on to the left kidney, Pasar Omega.
now this is the screen here you see this is the screen this is the left kidney of the gentleman and uh, here the parenchymal echogenicity is again preserved both poles mid region but there and um, here the hydronephrosis or dilation of the calluses is minimal to moderate and the pelvis is not that dilated. This is the pelvic region of lower pole, upper pole, parenchyma. However, the equigenicity of the parenchyma is raised, diffusely raised with the muffled corticomedullary differentiation as we saw in the uh, right kidney. Well, the uh, proximal ureter is dilated, is traceable to some up to this level. Let's try to get the maximum of the proximal ureter. So here we are. This is the proximal ureter. And again it's 8.5 centimeter approximately that uh, we can trace it. Now, called uh, the urinary bladder. You will see that the sharpening of the yeah. This is the urinary bladder. It's a globular shaped urinary bladder. And the uh, patient has micturated. So, we will also take it as a post micturation uh, urinary bladder, post void with uh, a volume of urine volume of one sixty three ml so it's raised more than fifty it is considered to be not normal. Here is the prostate in transposition, this is the prostate. No, uh, the prostate is within normal. This is again the prostate in longitudinal section. Post maturation residual volume is raised. Yeah. Now you will see that the distal ureter is opening up into the urinary bladder. Yeah, here this is the distal ureter. See, and it's uh, entering the. This is the right distal ureter. It's dilated, and uh, it's entering into the urinary bladder. <coughs> what about the left one? You yeah, know, even here you can see. Let's see if we can see any. Here, this you see, this is this is the uh, left distal ureter. You can see it's also entering the urinary bladder, and there is a calcified area, echogenic area rather, at the most distal end of the uh, left ureter where it enters the urinary bladder. <coughs> so this is the case of urinary bladder outlet obstruction by ultrasound parameters, and uh, with bilateral. Uh, obstructive uropathy and uh, bilateral renal parenchymal changes as well. Because as I always say, I am not provided with the uh, lab profile. So if you don't have the lab profile, you can only give the possible the findings and suffice with it. So will I? So here we are again, which I wish to show you both ureters. Now this is the right distal ureter entering the urinary bladder. Again this is the left distal ureter entering into the urinary bladder. The urinary bladder wall is not thick. You know we measure the anterior wall. 
is 5.1 smooth and 7 is considered abnormal and uh, there is no calculus or debris within the urinary bladder thank you very much